unhurried formations of military aircraft over the country. John Q. Public and family are fast becoming as air-minded as their fathers and grandfathers became. One day late because of a heavy rainstorm winds of 65 miles an hour. The 1940 and a welcome to Cleveland from F.C. Crawford, president of the National Air Races. Of the last 13 National Air Race meetings, the 1947 races marked the 10th held in Cleveland. Ohio's Governor Thomas J. Herbert brings the welcome and best wishes of the Buckeye State. The Bendix Trophy Race, the longest cross-country event on the program, gets the races off to a fine start as movie stunt flyer Paul Mance, who set a new record in winning the 46th Bendix, makes another record-breaking flight. From a standing start and with one stop for refueling, Mance flew the 2,048 miles from Van Nuys, California to Cleveland in four hours, 27 minutes, maintaining an average speed of over 460 miles per hour. Debona second and Lunkin third joined Mance on the platform. Jacqueline Cochran, for many years a leading figure in American aviation and herself winner of the 1938 Bendix, congratulated fourth place effort. Bill Eddy, Tommy Mason, and F.P. Whitten finished fifth, sixth, and seventh. Although she finished out of the wind circle, Jane Page received $1,000 for turning in the fastest time for a woman pilot. Big Bill Odom, his backer Milton Reynolds, and the bombshell in which Odom set a new round-the-world mark of 72 hours, 5 minutes. Favorite, Odom was kept from starting by a fuel leak. Don't purposely try this until you've logged a lot of air hours. It's stunt flyer Jimmy Grenier's conception of what we humans look like when we're learning to fly. Right in line with the increasing civilian interest in aviation is the Goodyear Trophy Race, a new event on this year's program. This race is limited to midget planes of individual design, such as the one entered by B.F. Robinson. Sweet Pea is the name of the plane entered by Art Chester, veteran air race pilot. Steve Whitman, another air race veteran, has entered this red job, known as the Whitman Special. Many of these planes, built in backyards and garages, contain jealously guarded secret features or hand-tooled parts which may well become standard on the plane of the future. They're off, flown in four elimination heats, two semi-final heats, and one final race. The Goodyear took two days of flying to complete. With their power limited to engines of 190 cubic inch displacement, most of them Continental C-85. Some of these tiny planes, making the most of design and construction, reached speeds of almost 200 miles per hour. Crossing the finish line, Bill Brennan zooms off into the wild blue yonder, flying the Whitman Special to victory. Mutual Admiration Society, Brennan and Whitman. Goodyear President P.W. Litchfield awards Brennan the Goodyear Trophy. The call to battle stations opens a service show simulating actual battle conditions. Enemy planes are sighted. And gun crews man their stations. 
formation of B-29 passes over to drop his egg. Too close for comfort. The Navy's cracked Blue Angels demonstrate formation flying technique. And airborne troops are dropped to consolidate the position. With the second holding of the Halley Trophy race, the National Air Races seem assured of an all-woman event worthy of the flying ability and competitive spirit of such girls as Ruth Johnson and Jane Page. At the starter's flag, Ruth Johnson takes the lead, cuts the first pylon close, and wings her way off on the first of five laps of the 15-mile quadrangular course, with Dory Marland in close pursuit. But luck, both good and bad, follows Dory Marland. Bad luck in a crack-up that eliminates her from the race, and good luck in that she is able to walk away from the wreck to fly another day. There's nothing to remind one of powder puffs and fancy hairdos in the race these girls are flying as they swing their AT-6s around each pylon and roar off to the next. Ruth Johnson holds her early lead, however, and becomes the winner of the second Halley Trophy race, with Grace Harris in Bill Ong's ship second and Edna Gardner White third. With a smile on her face, her arms full of roses, and the proud red cap of Kendall perched jauntily on her dark hair, Ruth Johnson is typical of the fine American youth wherein lies the future of American aviation. Sammy Mason makes stunting look easy, but experienced pilots will assure you that it takes great flying ability and split-second timing. Another new event in the 1947 races which catches the fancy of the spectators is the Kendall Trophy Race. Sponsored by the Kendall Refining Company of Bradford, Pennsylvania, the Kendall Trophy Race is limited to P-51 ships of identical design and is dedicated as a tribute to all World War II pilots and especially to the thousands of young Americans who fought and won America's battles at the controls of P-51 Mustangs. Never in the history of air travel has there been a more logical sponsor for a flying event. Kendall and aviation grew up together. From the time of the barnstorming pilots who flew by the seat of their pants to modern blind flying and speeds approaching that of sound, Kendall's record of achievement is unsurpassed. With greater and greater horsepower being produced by reciprocating engines, and the revolutions per minute of various parts increasing in proportion, lubrication has become a prime factor in the proper functioning and long life of aircraft engines. Kendall, the 2,000-mile oil, the oil you use in your car, has assisted in answering many of aviation's lubricant problems. At the drop of the starter's flag, Woody Edmondson of Lynchburg, Virginia, roars off into the lead. Close behind is Steve Bevel of Hammond, Indiana, in his silver galloping ghost. After holding his lead for three laps, Edmondson develops trouble and Bevel takes over. Continuing to pull away, Bevel wins by a full mile. Another winner for Kendall. But then Kendall is an old story with military aircraft such as the P-51. It is doubtful if the complete story can ever be told of Kendall's close cooperation with the government during the past war. 
Working with Uncle Sam and the manufacturers of military airplanes, Kendall had a prominent place in the program for developing and testing aviation engines. The Raymonds congratulate the Bevels. Bruce Raymond, co-owner of the Galloping Ghost, flew it to fourth place in the 46 Thompson. R.A. Keck, Kendall vice president in charge of sales, awards the Kendall Trophy to Steve Bevel, who set a new world's closed course speed record of 384 and 6 tenths miles per hour to become the winner of the first Kendall Trophy race. You call it, and the amazingly versatile helicopter will perform. Backward, forward, or around in a circle. In 1947, for the first time, jet-propelled aircraft have a competitive racing event designed especially for them, the Allison Trophy Race. Sponsored by the Allison Division of General Motors Corporation, leaders in the manufacture of jet engines, the Allison is a cross-country race of 520 miles from Cleveland Airport to Indianapolis, Indiana, and return. Competing are six Army Air Force jet pilots flying Lockheed P-80 Shooting Stars, powered by Allison jet engines. One hour and three minutes after the takeoff, they are back, with the winner, Captain Burner, having flown the 520 miles at the unbelievable average speed of 494 miles per hour. The JATO, or Jet Assisted Takeoff Unit, being demonstrated on the Navy's famous truculent turtle, gives promise of becoming standard equipment on commercial planes of the future. The tremendous auxiliary push given by the tiny portable unit will make possible the lifting of greater payloads and operation from smaller airports. Speed records continue to zoom upward as the Weatherhead Trophy, emblematic of the world's fastest mile, is awarded to Colonel Albert Boyd, Navy Commander Turner F. Caldwell, and Marine Major Marion Carl, who holds the present record of 650 and 6 tenths miles per hour. The Sohio Trophy race featured planes of the most radical design of any now considered standard. Although unusual in design, the sensational Lockheed P-38 Lightning Fighters made a tremendous contribution to the defeat of German and Japanese air power. The P-38, with its dual nacelles with the pilot's cockpit in the middle, looks alternately grotesque and graceful as it maneuvers and changes position against the sky. The Ohio became a one-man race as Tony Levere, Lockheed's chief engineering test pilot, takes the lead on the first lap, and at the finish is two miles ahead of the field. The Ohio established Tony's flame red Lockheed Lightning as the class of the P-38, and himself as the best of the P-38 pilots here for the races. I'd look around too if I were going to try to fly that thing. But stuntman Dave Binns knows what he's doing and proves conclusively that the old pusher-type plane with a 65-horsepower engine really does fly. That youth will be served was made apparent in the Tinnerman Trophy race for P-63s, which was won by 21-year-old Ken Knight, former fighter pilot. Flying his first race, Knight took the lead in the fifth lap and roared on to win $2,500 first place money and the Tinnerman Trophy. There's no doubt about how Ken feels about winning. A drafty way to make a living. With the 
Thompson Trophy race attracting the fastest planes with reciprocating engines, it was only natural that with the advent of jet propulsion, Thompson Products should sponsor a jet division of the Thompson. The winner on the shorter course with tighter turns and less straightaway is Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Pettit, whose average speed was slightly over 500 miles per hour, despite the fact that his visibility was lessened considerably by a blood-stained windshield received when he hit a bird at full speed. The Thompson Trophy race, the last on the program, has built a reputation as the wildest, toughest closed course competition on both men and machines in the field of air racing. With qualifying speed the only limitation on entries, the Thompson attracts planes of all types. R.G. Puckett will fly one of the four Corsairs entered. Another Corsair entered by Cook Cleland will be flown by Dick Becker, chief mechanic at Cleland's Air Force. The 46 Thompson winner, Cobra II, a P-63, gets a final polish. Cleland himself will pilot this blue and white Corsair. The Corsair is, in reality, an engine with wings. Its huge 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney Wasp Major was never designed for single-engine pursuit ships. It now powers super bombers like the consolidated B-36 and the Boeing B-50. In the horse race takeoff, it's every man for himself. An illegal starter in the race added to the confusion. On the first lap, Deming takes the lead. Hardwick comes in very low, too low. He crashes, wrecking his plane, but he is unhurt. Levere's P-38 rounds the home pylon. Becker takes the lead from Deming in the second lap to lose it to Cleland in the fourth. Penrose drops out in the sixth. On the 11th lap, Edmondson had to crash land when the engine of his plane exploded. Puckett, a late starter, loses fourth as Steve Bevel, Kendall winner, moves in. And the Thompson ends with Cleland first, Becker second with Cleland second Corsair, and Deming in last year's winner, third. A Cleveland boy, Cook Cleland, has won flying's toughest non-military closed course race at the world record speed of 396 and one-tenth miles per hour. $19,500 richer than he was half an hour ago, Cleland will devote part of his winnings to improving his private plane airport on the outskirts of Cleveland. It's just another way civilian aviation profits from the national air races. And so with the finish of the Thompson, the 1947 national air races are over. And once again, Kendall has contributed immeasurably to the writing of aviation history for all first place winners. Paul Mance, Bendix winner. Bill Brennan, Goodyear winner. Ruth Johnson, Halley winner. Steve Bevel, Kendall winner. Tony LeVere in the Sohio. Ken Knight in the Tinnerman and Cook Cleland in the Thompson. And 92% of all winners, pylon dusters all, flew to glory and riches with Kendall, the 2,000 mile oil. <laughs> <laughs>